everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and um, another episode of Messing Around on this layout. <laughs> I'm calling it Messing Around because um, that's what I'm doing at the moment is picking out jobs that I should have done ages ago. So um, yeah the last week's video um, doing that uh, redundant side and that was one of them. And um, another one is an issue I'm having with some track work. Yes, we do have problems um, now and again on this layout. But uh, let me show you what I mean. So, it involves the P2 as you'll see in a minute. Now then, we have a turnout here. And if we move up, you can see on the right, there's a very tight spot here where the track joins the um, turnout. No matter how what I do with that, whether I take it back with a file or slightly bend it in over, um, the P2 still derails because of this. Let me show you what I mean. Right, so I'm just going to fire up the P2. And here she comes. Now she's on very, very slow speed. About 20 miles an hour. She's just coming into view now. Front, front pair it was okay. When it gets through the middle, did you hear that click? Right, it seems to have gone through quite well, but let's try that again. Let's try going backwards. So it does come off the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up that point and put it in a curved point. So this is the issue here. This one. That one's fine. All the wheels stay on. But as it's coming round the second wheel on the set of eight is on there and as it comes around, as the third wheel comes across there, it just pushes the whole loco off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take up this point and redo the track work to there and all the way up to this joint here. And I'm going to put in a curved turnout just to see if that makes any difference, which I think it Right, so placing the long radius um, curved turnout in, you can actually see the problem even more because it really does highlight it. You can see the straight and the curve. It doesn't quite match and uh, that's where the problem lies. But in, in order to fix it, I'm going to have to move the turnout up. 58 millimeters from where it's connected to the track now which is there which is all right I'll just put a little bit of track in so that's the easy part so the hard part is ripping up those two pieces of track in order to get that point in so let's see how we get on so the first thing I'm going to do is remove all these track pins. Hopefully I'll just be able to put a screwdriver underneath the head and just gently lift it up and pull it out like so. And 
Now, have you noticed that about every 10 sleepers, roughly about 100 millimetres, Now if you look closely here you can see where I've kinked the track to try and get it to blend in with the straight piece. It, it was never going to work. But I persevered it because of the smaller locos and the diesels have no trouble running over that. So I shall carry on. Once the pins are removed, the next thing to do is to soften up this ballast because it's, it's been down about six years and uh, so I'm just using some soapy water and just spraying it on, letting that soak in and that should help to lift up the track work. So, so we'll give that a few minutes, let it soak in, and then we can start lifting up the track. What I'll do here is I'll just get pliers on the rails, twist the rails, and that'll pull it out of the fish plates here and here and here without damaging the turnout. Um, hopefully I want to be able to salvage the turnout because I can use that again. Right, so I've got me pliers, I'm just going to twist the track and just see if it pulls the rail out of the fish plates. There it goes. It's pulling the rail out of the fish plate without damaging it. But it's damaged the track, so I'm not worried about that because I've got to reshape the curve when the new track is fitted. So I'll do the same with that one. Yeah, so by twisting the rail quite far back, about 100 mil back, it does pull it out of the fish plates. But it does make a mess of the rails, as you can see there. So once it's soaked in for a while, it comes up quite easy. As you can see. So all you want to do is just to lift up these sleepers, look at that. Right, so it's just a case of gently lifting the point out now. That has come out quite easily. Um, I don't think there's any damage to it. Uh, don't look like it. So it's just a case of uh, cleaning that up and I can probably use that again, which is good. Um, so all we have to do now is tidy up the track bed, uh, fill in that hole with some polyfiller and then give it a good sanding and then we can start um, reconfiguring the track work back and making it as good as you knew. Right, so I've had a bit of a tidy up, um, I've got rid of all the ballast and I've sanded down the track bed, making sure that there's no bumps in there for when I come to relay the track. And um, yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the point ready um, for drilling the baseboard. I've added the 58mm extension and if we look here we can see it has drifted over to the left because of the curve which is, is which is what I want anyway so that makes that easier for when we come to put in the two tracks that curve away um, and remarry with that point and that track work up there so what do I mean by setting up a point so if we look through here, you can see there's no plastic underneath the rails. So what I'm going to do there is solder some wires to those rails and then drop the cables down through the baseboard. So basically I'm setting up a point for drilling. So 
here, just under here, um, you can see this wire just about there. So I'll have to solder a cable to that and then drop that down because that, um, because it's an electrofrog point, will um, feed uh, this V shape one way or the other, depending on which way the train is going, it's going that way or that way when the point motor is operated to um, select the direction of the locomotive. So yeah, so I've got to drill a hole just under these, this sleeper, so if I mark the edge of this sleeper, and that's where the, the hole's got to go, down through there. So that's that hole and those two holes, we've got one there, and if I just push that track back, and there should be another hole just here. Right, here we have to put in another hole for the pin from the point motor to come up through and that is quite straightforward because I've marked here on the edge of this um, latch as it were and I've done the same there on that side and I've marked out the centre of the track so basically, when I pull that away, we should be left with a series of pencil marks, like so. So it's just a case of joining the dots through there and then through there. So that would be my 12mm hole. And then we got two 4mm holes there, one there, one there, and then we've got another hole here which will be 4mm as well, right underneath the sleeper. So that's ready for drilling, so I can drill them, and at the same time I can solder the cables onto the bottom of this radius turnout. Right, so now I can fit the point, as you can see I've, I've put in the feed wires. Um, obviously this one, uh, as I explained earlier, will feed the this V here in, in alternative uh, directions and these two cables here go across the two tracks there as you can see. So that feeds the right side and that feeds the left side. So now we can put this Together. Hopefully the holes will line up with where I've soldered the cables. So one goes in there, one goes in there. I won't pin this down just yet, not until we've sorted out the curves which are going to come into this point. So I'm just putting it together loosely for now. Being careful with this one because it's very delicate that one. Right, connecting the track. So far so good. Now we're setting up for the first curve. Um, I've attached the track to this, this end, putting in the fish plates and um, what normally happens with curves is as you bend it you get a short track and a long track. Um, but what I've done here, as I've bent it round, I've pushed this rail into that fish plate uh, and therefore any um, extra length on the track ends up here as you can see the inside is longer 
plan the outside as it's come around the curve. So what I'm doing now is I'm just lining it up with the edge of the point here. So what I'll do is I'll just lift up the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's the edge of the track and what I'm doing is I'm lining it up with the center of the track there in between the two sleepers here. And then what I'll do then is I'll mark it with a pen and then that's where I will cut the rails and it should perfectly line up with the point. So what I'll do is just make sure that, that outside rail is hard up against the track there. All right, I've got a little bit of a gap, about a millimetre, which it's okay, I'll leave that there. Leave that for expansion. And then I'll line that up there, mark it there and there. Right, so I shall cut that and then fit it into the point. Right, so that's the track now pinned down. And as you can see, there is no kinks in that first bend. So what I've got to do now is same to the track that's going here and then reconnect it all in and then we can give it a test run before we ballast but it did take a couple of attempts on trimming these edges to get them to look right because um, although we had marked it and cut it it was just a rough cut um, to get it to look um, like these pair of tracks are in equal positioning if you like right so that's the track repaired and now we're just gonna do a test run with the P2 see if it derails here she comes she's doing roughly about uh, 20 miles an hour No issues at all. Right, so we'll try her in reverse. Same speed, and there's no issues there. So I'm quite confident that from now on, she can run on the up line. Right, so the test seems to be a success and all that's left to do now is um, connect the dropper wires which are on the point here and I'm going to put in a pair of dropper wires here also and here and uh, that's it, we can run trains again so let's see what it looks like when it's all done as you can see we've returned back to Tyne Dock um, the reason why we're here is because I had a couple of comments um, from the last video um, one comment was regarding this bridge and another comment was from Eric uh, who wants to know how much space or how many how much more empty boards do I have left um, to do some work on um, so let's um, focus on the bridge first um, the comment was what color did I use to put in uh, this uh, bridge support and this is the color here it's matte 689 um, yeah it's, it's a bit light as you can see, but once it's uh, weathered down, we can um, get the colour that we're looking for. So yeah, so that's uh, that was one comment. Now the other comment, if I pan the camera around, you can see um, there's an empty, well, baseboard there that's yet 
to be done. Um, I'm not happy with the track work going into the brewery, um, so I'm going to have to redo the track work. Uh, yes, more track work rework. <laughs> so yes, big reason why I'm not happy with it. It's just this here where it um, comes off of the main line uh, into the holding side and if you like um, I want to create more space put smaller turnouts in and move this turnout further back um, yeah so more track work rework that's why uh, I'm not happy with this but um, yeah I've got plenty more um, empty base boards left to do Eric this is just one of them and here is another area which is um, need some work um, I'm not happy with these sidings um, because they're too close to the road coming across so I'm gonna have to re re redo this in a way that we can have the road coming across and then I can utilize this space here to put in another building. We have this little area um, just outside the northeastern pub. I've got a great idea for here which uh, hopefully will follow um, this video. But uh, I'm going to keep you guys in the dark but uh, yeah I have a great idea for here. And this is the biggest baseboard left to do. It starts from High Shields, which is just here where High Shields finishes, the town of High Shields. And then we've got this long baseboard here of about um, nine foot. So all this needs doing. Obviously we've got the platform in for Little Haven Station, but uh, we've still got the rest of this area to do. Excuse the mess. <laughs> right, and we've got this pull-out drawer. There's work to be done on this. I want to try and create a river on this. That means taking off this top, putting in a plywood top, because it'd be more sturdy, because I found that the, the ends have curled up a little bit. That's due to the MDF. So, so we'll, we'll change that. So yes, we've got that as well. And then we make our way round, back round to the Snoop Down farm. Right, I'm glad we made it round to the farm because I just want to show you this little tiny detail that I've added quite recently. It's there, see it's just come into camera. That is a magpie, it's just flown out of that tree. Right, now it's time to check to see if my track work rework really does work. Over the past couple of nights I have painted the rails and then I've reworked the ballast. And looking from here, it looks like it's blending it in quite nicely. So I'm quite happy with that. And I've added a little tiny detail there, some railway sleepers and there's a one there just about buried. So there we are, that's the track work rework done. So let's just see how well the P2 copes with the new radius. Right, so I've set the speed for 20 miles an hour and uh, let's just see how it does. Right, so here she comes, she's just about to go onto the new piece of track, just there. And uh, at the moment the radius is quite um, long, here's, here's a tight bit here as it comes into the point. So that's far, far better than what we had before.
And now for the return leg. Coming onto the new piece of track there, that short piece of uh, 58 mil. Now we're on the new point, which there shouldn't be any problems there. But this is where we start to curve. As soon as we come off that point, it should just follow the natural bend. Yep, I'm happy with that. That's where that tight spot was, and it's um. Yeah, it's not even slowing down. Right, so there you have it. The track work rework is done, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, at some point I will fit the point motor and um, then I'll be ready to go. So, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.